I am Jal Bakshi. Basically, I am a military historian. But I'd like to tell you that my own elder brother, Captain Srishti Raman Bakshi, of the 11th Battalion Jammu and Kashmir Rifles, was killed in action in the 1965 war. So it's a very rather personal thing. And the very next year, I appeared for the NDA, joined the armed forces to take revenge. Uh, I'd like to tell you about the origins of this war. and the relevance that the lessons it has holds for us today firstly about the origins don't forget in 1962 china had attacked india suddenly and inflicted a very humiliating defeat on us and uh, that had really shattered morale national and military morale in the country because we were taken by surprise in 1964 you know our prime minister mr pandit jawaharlal nehru who was a leading light he passed away and pakistan felt this was the opportune time to strike while the nation was still demoralized and shaken the other thing is the military balance you know thanks to 1.5 billion dollars worth of american military aid actually pakistan had a clear edge over india in terms of equipment you know they had 765 tanks to our 602 tanks and most of their tanks were very modern tanks like the M47 M48 patterns of the era for which we had got just about 180 odd centurions to match them uh, talk of the the air power they had about uh, we had about 350 odd aircraft to their 180 aircraft but what people forget is that almost half our aircraft were deployed against china we had to cater for china too in the quality of the aircraft pakistan had an edge they had american 104 star fighters which was then the best aircraft of its category in the world we didn't have anything to match it we had asked for the russian big 21 they were just coming in when the war started uh to really they had about eight squadrons of f86 saber jets which is very effective fighter combat proven in korea and we had just about uh, six squadrons of hunters out of which two were deployed against china so we had only four left here five squadron nats and the rest all you know mysterious vampires tufanis all subsonics very slow moving aircraft which were not a match for the saber so pakistan had the edge in air power artillery pakistan had the edge the overall numbers we had more guns you know but again half our guns were deployed against china So even in numbers, Pakistan had the edge. Where it had the edge was in medium and heavy artillery. They had 155 millimeter Bofors, and you know uh, they had eight-inch howitzers. American supplied 155 millimeter guns. So they had about 172 of these compared to 112, out of which so many had to be deployed against uh, China. So all this gave Pakistan a clear edge. After 1962 we tried to catch up you know we tried to expand our army and modernize our armed forces and we were pushing ahead with this process so pakistan saw its edge was eroding fast and it decided very coldly very rationally that 1965 was pakistan's last chance to grab kashmir by force and it gambled and it failed badly what are the lessons of this conflict in the modern era you must remember that you know now we have a nuclear backdrop both countries have gone nuclear therefore you can't penetrate very deep into the other country because it could set off nuclear red lines therefore the kind of war the next india pakistan war may look very similar to the 1965 war therefore the lessons of the 1965 war have a very very great relevance for you today much more than the 1971 war which was a one off event you know those circumstances may never replicate themselves in south asia but 1965 is the model that we will have to learn the greatest amount of lessons from so i think it's very pertinent very important that in the 50th anniversary of this war we study this dispassionately and try and learn as much lessons as possible you know in this war pakistan had come very close to collapse closer to collapse than most people know or think they had finished their ammunition and had we pushed on the war with 10 days pakistan's collapse would have been evident to the whole world yet pakistan you see 
they were saved by the bell they were saved by the ceasefire and then they tried to spread the canard that oh you know we won this war i mean that is arrant nonsense because they had failed to achieve any of their war aims they had tried to start a revolt in kashmir they failed then they tried to seize kashmir by force they failed and then they tried you know their uh, uh, operation to get behind in the kasur area get to the bias bridge and they were talking of rolling on there with their tanks to delhi and it was a complete fiasco we destroyed their armor division so in every which way that you look at it pakistan lost the war but it created a propaganda that you know it had won a major david versus goliath battle and that is that is arrant nonsense and because pakistan deluded itself it suffered heavily in the next war the indians had learned their lessons the pakistanis had tried to create mythology and therefore they paid a very very heavy price they lost half their country in the next war you know one of the things that we must understand about this war is that uh, on the very last day but one of this war Prime Minister Shastri had called the then army chief General Jain Chaudhary, and he asked him a point blank question: "Ki General, we are under a lot of pressure for to accept a ceasefire. If we continued the war for ten more days, do you think any very spectacular results could be achieved?" And General Chaudhary, of course, at that stage replied that uh, you know Pakistan has failed to achieve any of its objectives. It's not been able to uh, you know grab Kashmir. not instigate a revolt we have captured haji peer we are running low on ammunition this is what he said and therefore he said that possibly we should accept a cease fire it was later learned that actually only about 20% of our ammunition had been used up the rest was all lying in the ammunition depots at karki and other places and had we pressed home for another 10 days pakistan would have collapsed completely they would have been forced to beg sue for a cease fire as it is they were in a bad shape they had taken heavy tank casualties and their ammunition was zero because the americans supplied them ammunition basically for 14 to 20 days war this war went on for 22 days therefore pakistan was in a panic situation and it is unfortunate that you know they were saved by the bell instead of a knockout you know they could claim that they had survived the fight with a much bigger enemy which is wrong actually they were very close to collapse this is one thing that we can mention and therefore the problem that comes out is ammunition management the pity is that 50 years after the war we still have a problem of ammunition management we are still this time we are short of running short of ammunition for critical reserves and i think the lesson to be learned is we must correct this ammunition gaps critical ammunition shortages that is one of the major lessons that emerged from the 65 war